Morning everybody, welcome to Tuesday and to our devotions in the Doncaster circuit or wherever you may be watching from. Um, it's good to be with you this morning and um, here we are in October, first Tuesday of October. The, um, the lectionary this time takes us into Hebrews um, and I really like Hebrews. It's, you know, after the you've got the four Gospels in the New Testament and then you've got Acts and Romans and then the letters get shorter and shorter and shorter. And then you get this big book of, of Hebrews, which is sort of 13 chapters or whatever it is. And um, and it's a really, really good read. If you want to have a, a read of something good, have a little read of Hebrews. Um, and I love this statement. It's, it was written, we think, by several people, to several people. It wasn't written by one person to an individual church. It was written by a probably by a group of people, um, to Hebrew Christians. And this is what um, the commentary in the beginning of my Life Application Bible says about it. Just one paragraph. It says this. <laughs> I love the way it starts. Hebrews is a masterful document written to Jews who were evaluating Jesus or struggling with this new faith. The message of Hebrews is that Jesus is better, Christianity is superior, Christ is supreme and completely sufficient for salvation. Love that. Excellent. So today we're looking at um, chapter two, the second part of chapter two, from verse five to verse 18. And um, I'm not going to read it all, but the bit I wanted to concentrate on is the last bit. And it says this. Sorry, we're jumping straight in today. Um, I'm going to give you all the other bits in a minute. It says this from verse 14. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too, that's Jesus, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death, he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason, he had to be made like his brothers in every way in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. It's that last verse that I particularly want to um, think about today. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. It always helps when you're giving an illustration or giving somebody some advice if you are speaking from experience. I have a, a thing where my heart goes too fast every so often, hasn't done it for a very long time. Um, but when it does that, it just doesn't stop and you have to be wheeled into A&E and have it stopped. And they inject you with some uh, a, a drug called adenosine and when they've tried everything else and um when they, when they were about to inject, inject you to say it might make you feel a bit funny and one time i remember saying to the nurse who said that to me you've never had this have you <laughs> and he said no i was like no you wouldn't be saying it would make you feel a bit funny if you'd had it, it makes you feel more than a bit funny let me tell you we can say things because we're told them or we can say things because we really understand them Somewhere in this house is a more relatable incident for all of you. Somewhere in this house are the Christmas chocolates. I know because I bought them. I bought them when they were like £3.50 a tub of celebrations. And I'm sure those tubs feel lighter this year than they did last year. Anyway, £3.50 a tub. So I got a tub of celebrations and a tub of... I want to say roses, but I think they might be quality street. Anyway, two tubs of chocolates. They are somewhere. I don't know where they are. I could make a guess, but I'm not going to, because if I find them, they won't last till Christmas. I have to trust somebody else to hide them. And somebody else isn't the children. Somebody else is Sean. <laughs> Although, mind you, that's no guarantee that they're going to last either. Um, <laughs> but it's very tempting to, if chocolate is in the house, very tempting. Sweets, Haribo, jelly sweets, hard-boiled sweets, anything like that. 
They can stay here for months on end and I wouldn't bother about them. But chocolate, chocolate's a different thing. Chocolate is not so easy to ignore for me. I can be tempted quite easily by chocolate. One of the things that we often think about our faith is, well, it's easy. It's easy for, for God. It's easy. It was easy for Jesus because he was he was God. But when we read the account of the temptation of Jesus, it, there's nothing easy that comes across about that. He was tempted on basic human uh, needs. And he, don't forget, Jesus was fully human and fully God. That, that um, incarnation, that, that, that two in one, that mystery of God, fully God and fully human. He was tempted when he was tired. He was tempted when he was hungry. He was tempted to end this, this period of, of suffering that he was going through. He was tempted with some very basic human needs and in the power of God he resisted. So when we turn to Jesus and we want help with things that we are tempted with and it, it might not be you know sometimes when we think about temptations we think about the Ten Commandments and we think about you know well I, I've never murdered anybody I've never you know committed any great the thefts or you know Maybe we haven't, but maybe I'm tempted to check Facebook a little bit too much and put work on the back burner. Maybe I'm, I'm tempted to lie in instead of jumping up and getting on with the jobs that I know need to be done that day. Maybe I'm tempted with um, how to, to react in a, in a short, with a short temper instead of with patience. There are all sorts of things that we may be tempted with. But when we are tempted, we know that we do not have a God who does not understand. We have a saviour who has who saves us because he knows exactly what he is saving us from. He has been through it. He has conquered it. He's conquered temptation and he's conquered death. And in him, we have strength, we have hope and we have life. Call on him today and see what a difference he makes to you. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you that you are not some distant being who understands nothing of the people who worship him, but you are our creator God. You made us, you know us, and you sent your son to be one of us, to live amongst us, fully human and fully God. Lord, we thank you that he understood he understands what it is to be tempted. He understood what it was to know um, happiness and sorrow, pain and health. He understood all of those emotions that we do. But Lord, when we are feeling tempted, we pray that you will, we will turn to you and that you will give us the strength and the courage that we need to stand firm in your name. Help us, Lord, to live our lives to the best of our ability in the most Christ-like manner and we ask this for your name and for your glory. Amen. Okay, God bless you and keep you, make his face shine on you, be gracious to you and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.